Who has a poster of the Joker? <laughs> why do they make posters of the Joker? Like I would have a poster. Like of why? The, I would have a poster of the Joker, but if the Joker was a real person, hell to the no, yeah. I would not hell have a to poster. The no, dude, why? I am vengeance. I am the night. I am Batman. People of Earth, I am Darkseid, Lord of Apocalypse. Service with a smile. I know about all your other major enemies, but you never mentioned him. He was the biggest, wasn't he? Oh, come on, it's Lex Flippin' Luthor. Why should we trust him? What? Like a bunch of super friends? More like a Justice League. We rewatched this never too late, and I've got Batman in my basement, so let's go ahead and talk about those two episodes. I'm not gonna do a synopsis of It's Never Too Late because a lot of surprising stuff happens in this episode, a lot of turns are taken, so if you haven't seen the episode, I recommend you go check it out. Because we're about to spoil the heck out of it. Connor, what did you think of the episode? Um, so yeah, no, it's never too late. It was uh it was an interesting uh, little, little episode. Um thing is though that mob related stuff, which is kind of the biggest part of this episode, um it was it was alright. I just mob stuff isn't really my favorite stuff when it comes to superheroes. Like it's my least favorite part of the Spider Man game, it's my least favorite part of early Flash, it's my least favorite part of Gotham. All that sort of stuff so it was this was not my favorite episode i'll just kind of say that and um, it was fun seeing bruce being bruce again when he's just like being a detective and all that there's one thing i think the show is nailing so well is showing bruce being a detective uh because not many other interpretations of the character do a good job at that um but yeah it was the ending was interesting it was kind of more serious and darker than a lot of what we've already seen in the show which was fun but yeah. This episode really shocked me the first time I watched it. And could actually like understand what was happening. Because there are so many mature themes. And then just like all the turns it takes. Because you kind of think in the flashbacks how it keeps cutting to the train. He's obviously traumatized in some way. Uh, what was his name? Uh, I already forgot his name. I'm stupid. Arnie? Yeah, Arnie. Or Michael? Uh, it was Arnie. Michael was his younger brother, and then... What was his last name? Arnie was the actual... Arnie something. Uh, Strom... Stromo. No, that's Stromo. the other one. Yeah, Stromo. Stromo. Yeah, he's obviously traumatized by trains in some way, and it keeps cutting to the flashbacks between him and Michael. And we don't even learn they're brothers until the end. And so yeah, you, that was interesting. It keeps leading you to... I guess, think, this is what I thought when I initially watched it, at least, that uh, the brother died, but you find out that he was the priest all along. Yeah, that was cool to mm -hmm. us. Yeah, because uh, they do a really good job of kind of showing that relationship, but not giving it away, because Batman goes and visits the priest, but you kind of just think it's to help start on to help Stromwell because like Batman still sees good with him, good within him, even though because all he really does is uh, deal drugs. He doesn't really do too much. I mean, organized crime and stuff. He's not like rotten scum like Joker or something that just kills and all that. So like Batman can still yeah. see the good with him and thinks he can be saved. So that that was really cool. Okay, Everest, what what do you think? Uh, I think this is a really good episode. A very deep episode so many mature themes running throughout it and they did it well to the point where it could definitely just kind of brush over like a younger kid watching it and they would just be like oh there's an evil guy that batman has to stop this is a little bit of a boring episode but as you grow older and you watch it you see the different layers to this episode and they really went in depth and i think it's great i also want to point out how this episode shows not everyone in Gotham believes Batman exists yet, because there's that one guy who's like, wow, I thought he was just a myth or whatever. See, see, and what, I thought... What I took away from this episode is, like, this was the first major step of Batman becoming Gotham's savior, because, like, he's kind of opposed to the public now, instead of just, like, GCPD and just a slight few people. Yeah, and I thought that was pretty dang cool, and everything from, you know, Arnie's son 
dealing with drugs to Arnie eventually turning himself in with the help of his younger brother and that whole train scene there there's a lot of stuff in here that you really have to look at and understand and once you piece it all together and look at it i think it really is quite an interesting episode and a pretty great episode if i had to take anything away it would be that there's not one like insane stand out moment really that like after you go through everything you'll be like that was amazing but there's just all these little things that make you think and i really enjoyed watching this episode and really kind of diving into everything in here and i really enjoyed it yeah uh, my first viewing of this episode i was pretty young and didn't understand what was going on at all so i thought it was just a boring episode then when i rewatched it when i was older and just still when i rewatch it it still kind of amazes me that this is a kids show with an episode entirely based around drug addiction yeah like how do you get away with that just amazing i have no idea but they did yeah it's pretty incredible because that's such an adult theme and like this is such a great social commentary on a very real world problem Mm -hmm. and that's something this show does great as social commentaries because like they are real world, world problems being showcased in this animated show and they do it pretty well and just yeah. show, showing how his son got hooked off of the drugs he was dealing and how his mom how the kid's mom was like i left you arnie to get away from this but your son wasn't so lucky it's like if you have any connection to drugs it can just lead back to you yeah they do a good job at like dressing it up as well so that it still feels like a kids episode in a way the way that um like both you and everest were saying that uh you didn't really realize what the real story of the episode was until you were older it's like they do a good job at making it so that kids can enjoy the episode without getting caught up in all that seriousness but then when you're older you still see the seriousness and it makes the episode that much deeper for you and uh the other thing i want to point out that like what well, that line from um arnie's brother towards the end hit so hard like the the whole like, fallen empire like a yeah lost son, an empire that. crumbling a marriage shattered son lost you're doing fine dude that's heartbreaking like the like way he that... delivered it didn't sound that heartbreaking but when you like actually think about the words he said that's just like that hit so hard and, like, Arnie doesn't even realize, like, everything he's lost until that. Mm-hmm. And how... Uh, he's and that was when he was like, him. okay, I gotta shut this down. Yeah, and when, when GCPD gets there, he's like, Commissioner Gordon, I have a statement to give you. So, like, that good Batman mm -hmm. saw with him kind of comes to fruition right there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we learned that, uh, Michael, like, lost his leg. Because it kind of built it up to where you thought he died, but he lost a leg yeah i remember that just being shocking like on my first viewing like what the priest is his brother <laughs> all right so let's go ahead and give this some letter grades connor um i give it a c it was like it was a good episode it just wasn't my kind of thing okay. wow uh everest i'm gonna give it an a minus i mean like such a deep episode i i i really like this episode okay something else i forgot to mention real quick is uh how at the beginning it sets up the whole uh mobster war between thorn and stromwell and like the drugs are there like it mentions that stromwell's been dealing drugs and that his son is missing but like he thinks his son is missing because thorn took him but then we learn that mm -hmm. his son is at a clinic because he's hooked on drugs so like, yeah just so many turns throughout this episode i love it i'm gonna give it an a okay. solid a Fair. love the episode yeah all right let's go on to the next episode i've got batman in my basement <sighs> let's just talk about it connor what do you think <laughs> um all right so i was 
excited for this episode for a couple of reasons. <laughs> One being it was the first, uh, I knew it was the first episode with Penguin. So a, a new Batman villain and an iconic Batman villain. I was hyped to see him. And um, just uh, the reputation this episode has had me go, this is going to be a fun episode. So I thought it was going to be, it was going to be stupid and dumb, but in a fun way. But no, it was stupid and dumb in a stupid way. <laughs> that uh, just didn't, feel like, I kept thinking, kind of thinking, this could have been funny, but it's just annoying the way that they make Batman look so dumb and have to be saved by kids. And the, just the way Penguin was, like, this has got to be my least favorite interpretation of Penguin maybe ever. Like, it was just one episode. He gets better, but, he gets better. Okay. Just nothing about him was, like, as good as the Danny DeVito version or the Gotham version. I was like, this is... This is Penguin, I guess. Um, and then, like, we get that shot of him just sitting on top of the Batmobile, hitting it with his umbrella. <laughs> like, why is he doing this? <laughs> um, he was just such a weird character. It's such a weird thing. Like, I know Penguin's supposed to be weird, but it was just really weird. <laughs> like, I don't know how I'm supposed to describe it. Um, but yeah, they didn't have to make Batman look as dumb as he was to showcase the kids. They could have easily done a good job at showcasing the kids without making Batman look like an complete idiot. I did like how they're like bullies, I guess, weren't complete bullies. They weren't, you know, those people you see in stuff like this where they're absolutely horrible and like you can't wait for them to get beaten up by the protagonist or whatever. No, they were still pretty okay people. They just were kind of mean sometimes. But it was yeah. good that they didn't go like full in with the whole bully angle. They weren't like standard um, things, boys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> One switch blades and like completely over to the jump top off cliffs. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was just stupid bad. It was weird. Yeah, the opening of this episode, I was like, oh, maybe this episode isn't as bad as I remember. But then, like, once the vulture started attacking Batman, I'm like, okay, this has already gotten <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> Because it just opens like a standard episode, you know, they're just stealing a fabricated egg. I'm like, okay, this isn't bad. Yeah. And then just the vulture takes out Batman. I'm like, I mean, birds are like, pretty ruthless, but that's Batman. And how Batman yeah. just drops the battering like he does, I'm like, what was that? If, if Batman has shark spray repellent, I'm pretty sure he has bird spray repellent. Or bird spray repellent. So, yeah. could have showcased that. The animation looked yeah. so off in this episode, like just throughout. Yeah, it did. Just the one of the weaker animation episodes. Yeah. That movements and everything. It's like, this just doesn't look right. Right, Everest, yeah. you got any thoughts? Um, I I can't add a whole lot to what Connor said, to be honest. I Again, I, I went into this episode trying to have a very open mind because I was like, you know, maybe I can find some fun in this. But I just kept pointing out things that were stupid. And there... Maybe I had, like, some enjoyment here and there, and I agree with the bullies thing. Like, it was good that they didn't make them just horrible, unrealistic people. But overall, Batman looks so stupid in this episode. We don't really get a lot of what they had been nailing with Batman in the other episodes in this one. And yeah. the kids, like, I get that they wanted to showcase them, but they just made them seem really, like, I don't know, unrealistic to me, and the whole thing with Penguin being introduced, and it, it's just such a weird, dumb episode, and Penguin, he is a weird character, but he just felt really off in this one, and again, he gets better later on, but I just don't think this was the right move on really any front for the series, and Looking back, it's a memorable episode because of how bad and dumb it is, but I I don't know. I just, it's all pretty, like, just wacky in, a, in the worst way. Yeah, it's like, up until now, all of the episodes, while it's obvious a lot of them are made for kids, they're still, it's still kind of like kids' episodes that can be fun for adults as well most of the time. But this was the first episode that was just like, I felt straight up was made just for kids. Like, there wasn't yeah. really anything there for, like, older people to kind of latch on to and be like, hey, this is fun. Mm -hmm. I did have more fun watching this episode and uh, finding stupid shit throughout the episode than I did watching the Underdwellers. <laughs> so I'll get I will agree on episode. that. 
Yeah, the Undertale. I will fun agree fun. with that statement. It was almost fun finding just stupid crap that made no sense because the Underdwellers, it's just like just bad. But it, this one's stupid, and that you can kind of you know have and, a tiny bit of fun looking for that. And the penguin wasn't good, but he's better than the Sewer King. And it's the penguin, so you know you got you got an actual rogue there. I think this is this episode is like the writers were just thinking, what if we mix Home Alone with Batman? And that's just a terrible idea. <laughs> Those yes. two things don't yes, go yes, together. Yes. Home Alone was all I was thinking. Dude, as soon as the penguin breaks in and they start like the one dude opens the closet or whatever you open and just trips over the wire, I'm like, oh, this is so Home Alone. <laughs> And I, what did they even throw down the stairs that did nothing to the pink one? It, like, tied him up and then he just cut it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know who the pink one is. Shouldn't you know about his trick umbrella? <laughs> yeah, like, that's kind of... dangerous guy. It's kind of what he's known for. And I want to point out, this kid, every time it cut to his basement, the only poster you saw was of the Joker... Who has a poster of the Joker? <laughs> why do they make posters of the Joker? Like I would have a poster. Like of why? The, I would have a poster of the Joker, but if the Joker was a real person, hell to the no, yeah. I would not hell have a to poster. The no, dude, why? <laughs> it's the same way that in like in the Flash in Jitters, you can buy um Zoom related coffees and stuff. It's like why would they make things for serial killer supervillains? It makes no sense. It's like why? <laughs> Why would like, he... I get he's supposed to be a detective, but it makes zero sense to... I don't know. Just... And that's a good point, Connor. Why would you even make it? <laughs> like, oh, there's this murderous clown. He's a serial killer. He's kidnapped more people. This is great Have for advertisement. Gotham's population has plummeted since he's appeared, but we're going to make posters of him. We're going to make a real uh -huh. cash in off of this. He's the scariest person in the history of the world. Let's make a poster of him. Let's that's, make that, posters that seems of like something J. Jonah yeah. Jameson would do. Yeah. <laughs> that, oh, yeah. That's such so, a J. So, Jonah like Jameson Bugle. move. Okay. I want pictures of Joker. I just had to point that out because it kept cutting to it and it always had that Joker poster. I'm like, okay, where are the other posters? I'm like, oh, there are no other posters. But like, you don't like, even have Batman a poster woke up of delirious. Batman. Batman could have woke up delirious and thought he was Your a Joker. Your literal idol, something. you don't have a poster of him. You have a poster of his worst <laughs> enemy. Was a serial killer supervillain? Why would they even? How do you have this? Does your mom never come down in the basement and be like, "Hey, why do you have a poster of a serial killer on your wall?" I'd it's just the new look for the Jekyll the Clown. If if the Joker existed in the world and I just saw a poster of him, I'd be like, "Get rid of that! <laughs> just I don't want it. I don't want to see it." <laughs> That'd be terrifying. Especially knowing your son has it. Like, why? Okay, I just had to bring that up. Letter grades, Connor. Uh, I'd give it a strong D. Okay, strong D. Yeah, strong. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everest. Um. Ooh, this is tough. I. I really. This episode's so stupid, but in the fact it's kind of fun. I'm gonna give it a D plus. I still don't like it at all, but... Yeah, I'm gonna give it a D plus, too. Like, it's not a good episode, but I honestly had fun just finding all the stupid stuff. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is fun. And, like, every time I saw the scene when they were breaking into the house, like, I just kept having flashes to Home Alone. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is yeah. terrible, but I want to watch Home Alone now. <laughs> yeah. I want to watch Home Alone. <laughs> Maybe this is just advertising for Home Alone. But... Yo, sponsorship? I wish. Yeah. But the like, next two episodes... They needed some money. Home Alone was like, yo. Next two episodes we'll be talking about are Heart of Ice and The Cat and the Claw. So, oh, heck yeah. Heart of Ice, the most iconic sh episode of the show. So we're ready. Captain yep. Cold. Yeah, Captain Cold. Right? <laughs> Captain Cold, Connor. Just, just keep telling okay. yourself that. Okay.